Okay, so this final video is just giving a quick example of how we actually use liquid crystals um, in uh, displays to turn pixels on and off. And the key here to understanding it is realizing that if I have a twisted pneumatic crystal, we also call these uh, cholesteric liquid crystals, then when light passes through that twisted uh, pneumatic crystal, the direction of polarization of light rotates. So just a quick reminder, um, light, you know, if I'm just generating it from a standard light bulb, uh, uh, incandescent light bulb, um, there tends to be no polarization direction. Um, so let's say I first polarize the light by having um, a polarizer uh, present. Um, so that's what this thing is, is serving as. And um, it basically only allows um, polarized light um, that's oriented in one particular uh, direction through. And so in this case, the light that's coming through is uh, polarized, so it's only allowing it to, to vibrate in the plane. So when that light then passes through this twisted pneumatic crystal, that polarization direction starts to rotate and change with the rotation angle of uh, the individual messages. And so basically we can think about this as this is how light is interacting with these rod-like particles. And as the particles twist, the direction that light is allowed to vibrate also twists. Uh, and so what this, this figure is showing is that these molecules, we could have a left-handed or a right-handed um, twisted pneumatic crystal and it would change the direction of rotation. Um, but the important thing here is that how much they rotate is dependent on um, the, the amount of material they pass through, so the distance that they're passing through, as well as um, this rotation, degree of rotation um, uh, of, of uh, the material itself. And so if we have exactly the right amount of material, we can go from something that's polarized um, horizontally to something that is polarized vertically after it has passed through that material. And understanding this is really key to understanding how liquid crystal displays work. Um, so let's think about something, and let's think about something where we have a polarizer um, at the top, and so light that's coming, um, let's say this light starts off um, at the top and it's coming downwards. Um, when it goes through that polarizer, it's, uh, it's polarized in one direction, and so that's um, basically the direction of the plane, this orange broad plane-like arrow. Um, and if the liquid crystal is uh, in a state that is in a, um, a, a twisted pneumatic crystal, again, we can cause that polarization direction to rotate. And in this case, we've caused it to rotate a full 90 degrees. Um, and we have a second polarizer on the bottom. Um, and so in this case, the second polarizer is rotated 90 degrees with respect to the original polarizer up at the top. So if this liquid crystal is in the twisted pneumatic state, then the light that comes down, it's polarized in one direction. The twisted pneumatic crystal rotates that direction of polarization. So the polarization direction rotates a full 90 degrees as it's passing through the material and that allows it to pass through this second polarizer. Um, and so in this case, the light is passing through um, this combined stack of materials. Now, what they're indicating here is that some of these liquid crystals can be stimulated by different things, not just temperature, but also potentially something like electric field. And in this case, if we turn on a voltage, we create an electric field across um, this layer, and the material responds by changing from that twisted pneumatic structure to a plain old pneumatic structure. So again, we have these rod-like materials, but now they're all pointing in one direction. And so they no longer change the direction of polarization of light as it passes through that. And so what that means is, again, if we've polarized light in a particular direction up top, um, then that light will come down, but now this bottom polarizer is uh, orthogonal to that top polarizer and all of the light will be blocked. So none of the light will pass through. Um, so this is 
basically how liquid crystal displays work is that they use an electric field to change that liquid crystal, to change it back and forth between something that changes the polarization of light and something that does not change the polarization of light. Um, and they use a combination of polarizers, um, twisted pneumatic crystals where we know the, the distance that it takes to rotate 90 degrees. And so we have the appropriate thickness of material um, so that we rotate exactly 90 degrees. Um, and when we do that, then we will have the, um, the um, highest amount of, of light passing through possible. But if they're not rotating 90 degrees, then, then this uh, uh, second polarizer down here is going to block any light from passing through. And so if we think about it technologically, you know, there are a couple different um, ways we can orient these things. They look a little bit different if it's uh, something that's backlit versus something like, um, you know, the old uh, calculator or your old uh, digital watch where basically it's using ambient light to either reflect or cancel out something. Um, but if you think about it technologically, what, what do you want your, your, your display to be able to do? You want it to be able to be bright when it's on. And so that means passing through as much light as possible in this state. You want those offs to be dark, dark black. So you want it to be canceling out any light escaping through in this state. And then the other thing is you want it to be able to switch very dynamically. So you want to have a crystal clear picture, especially when things are moving around a lot on the screen. And what that means at the material level is that you want these materials to be able to transition between this twisted pneumatic structure uh, and the traditional pneumatic structure as quickly as possible. Um, and so the, the rate at which uh, the molecules can align and then disalign is important uh, for the technological application at this point. So that's basics of how a liquid crystal display works. And again, it depends on the properties of the material. It requires these liquid crystals um, and, it, and it relies on the way that they interact with light to turn each pixel on and off. Thanks.